Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? I almost said good morning. <laughs> I have no idea what time it is. <laughs> Let me know if you can hear me. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. Interesting day here to be a trader. Good to be here. My name is Melissa Armo. For those of you that don't know me, I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And tonight I'm going to talk about how you can make $250,000 a year day trading one strategy. And I do prefer to short, which is something that we'll talk about today. I'm going to go through the webinar today, and then I figured we have a little bit of time here at the end. Depending on where we're at, I will bring up the chart, and we can look at what the market did today. If you have any questions as we go along, you can just plop it and write it in the room, and I will see the questions as we go along, okay? Very good. Oh, here's me. <laughs> That's me for those of you that don't know what I look like if you haven't seen me on TV. And here is my information if you'd like to reach out to me, Melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP if you have any questions as well, okay? So let's talk a little bit here. Why do people find day trading so hard? I've been teaching people now for about five years plus, trading for 10, and I've heard it a lot from people that it's difficult to trade. And I remember back 10 years ago, I still remember that when I started out, it was hard too. I, I found my way, I will tell you though, very early to gaps. Now I didn't know then what I obviously know now about gaps. Uh, but I will tell you that focusing on one specific s strategy really helped me find success in the market and and within a, within a sh early couple of years. I think some people trade for 10, 15, 20 years and they don't find success. So I, I consider myself lucky that it only took me about three years to figure out everything that I do and teach and know today. So I think people find trading hard because there's just too much information out there and you have to kind of sort through it. And you don't have a focus unless you decide to do one thing consistently and really get good at it. You can't be a jack of all trades and good at nothing. It really is about fine tuning, okay, what you do. So there are many reasons that people find trading hard, but I really think it's about the lack of focus and then the lack of clarity as well. Traders are often second guessing themselves. And this is something that I do a good job at doing, uh, at not doing, which is I don't second guess myself. I say I like something or I don't. And if I'm wrong, which sometimes I am, I go back and I see was there something there I missed, okay? And I never beat myself up about it if there is. Or sometimes something doesn't work, a trade doesn't work, and, and it just doesn't work and there isn't any reason. And that's something else a lot of people find hard to accept as well. But you need to have conviction to trade and make money every day, okay? Every trade that you take, you need to feel like that about it. You need, to, you need to feel like that about it, whether you make a dollar in the market or 250 grand a year, okay? The conviction comes from the knowledge because without that, you won't be successful no matter what you do. And so what I do is I focus on one strategy. I even focus really more on one directional bias, which is shorting, although I will look at longs too, okay, occasionally. But it, conviction is really important because that's what allows you to take the risk, to take the trade. To, to, to press the button knowing that you're risking your own cash, okay? Because when you put a trade on, you don't know till you're out of the trade if it's gonna work or not, the result, okay? So you have to feel conviction like you're gonna be able to take it and come away with a worthwhile decision that you will turn the amount of money that you risk over into profit. You can't just trade without any money, all right? So you wanna be able to risk, say, a thousand bucks and turn that thousand dollars into another thousand so that you have a total of instead of a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks. And when I go into trades with conviction, I feel extremely confident, and that's really what conviction means to me too, believing in myself and my own knowledge that I'm going to be able to turn that money and turn it over into more, more money than I would have if I didn't take the trade. All right, make sense? So here is a chart of the SPY. This was this morning, actually. SPY closed much different, looks much different here now. But this morning, we look like this in the market. And what do I focus on? I focus on a strategy that involves a stocks or ETS, which the SPY is here, the gap. So just to review, for those of you that don't know what a gap is in a chart, this is a daily chart. 
All it is is the difference between the close and the open. So the market closed here and opened here. It closed at one price and opened at a different price. This was Friday. Sold off. Then we sold off here, closed at one price, opened at a different price. So we gapped down Friday. We gapped down Monday morning. I don't know where we're going to be tomorrow. Again, the market ended up closing. I don't remember the exact number, but somewhere down. Okay, so we fell a lot from where we were this morning. Actually, all day long we, we sold off. But tomorrow morning we could gap up, we could gap down, nobody knows. But I focus on stocks that are gapping. And I like to focus on shorts, which is why the last two days here are significant for looking at my strategy and what I do. But there are gap ups. And there were many gap ups in the market. And we started the year with a gap up here, which you actually could have bought. And if you did, you made money for the month of January, okay? It is about institutional money, and that's what I really focus on when I'm choosing whether to go long or short in a trade, and whether I'm choosing what stock to trade at all, okay? So here's a chart of Apple. Again, this looks like much different, you know, because we sold off, and this was a morning chart I did of Apple, but this is a day chart of Apple, and you had a gap in Apple, which was Thursday night into Friday morning. Stock closed here, gap down Friday morning, and Friday morning, Apple was a short. We will review this trade. It was a put as an option trade and was a short as a day trade too. And this is something where, again, I'm looking every morning in the pre-market what the stock is doing in the gap. So gaps happen at night, gaps happen in the morning. They happen anytime between four o'clock when the market closes and 9.30 a.m. So you have a lot of time if you wanna learn and trade my system to prep for the next day, which is one of the benefits, again, of doing what I do. You, you have prep time. So like if I don't decide I want to trade on a certain day, I usually know before 9.30. I usually know like way before 9.30, oh my gosh, there's nothing good to do. Or I absolutely love this thing and I really want to do it. And that again helps me with the confidence level and the conviction to trade, okay? So the benefit of learning what I do is that I'm really not doing anything in overnights for the day trades. There's no overnight risk. When you take swing trades, you have overnight risk. And even if you do options you decide to do options with me, it's a certain amount of risk where you can't lose any more than the amount you risk in the trade itself. And an option trade has a cost. Say something costs a dollar and you, you risk a dollar, that's all you could lose is a dollar. Swing trades, there's overnight risk, which you, which you probably saw in the last two days actually because of the fact that the market fell. You probably had overnights that were in long positions and they were at risk then with the market gapping down. So the benefit of day trading is you're in control of your money because you're in and you're out. You're in and you're out quick. Five minutes, two minutes, one minute, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Although you could have been in the trades like the shorts and Apple on Friday and even today, you could have been in them all day. You don't have to be. And that's actually not what I do. It's a quick in and a quick out to know that you have the profit where you get out when you're up, okay? So in that way, I'm not always looking, looking, looking to see, oh my gosh, what is the market doing? Well, I just get in and I just get out quick, all right? And I get the move. And I'm focusing on the morning move also in charts, okay? Any questions so far, you can ask me. Just plop it, like I said, in the room. So anyways, getting back to what I was saying, uh, when you're trading, you're, you're doing something where you are taking a set amount of money, putting the trade in, putting a stop, it's like a, a limit order stop you could use in the market when you take a day trade. And it's not investing. You're just saying, I'm going to risk this amount of money and I'm going to get in and out really, really quick. And so really, if you look at it as a percentage with day trading, the percentage of return on your investment actually is, it can be quite high because you're taking a set amount of money and you're flipping it over, which is essentially 100% of the amount you're risking. But a lot of people don't look at trading that way. They look at it as something called an R unit, which is not some, a term that I created. But when I look at trades, I say, well, let's have a set risk per trade, and that's it. And I tell everybody that comes to me, determine what that is. And it should be equal to that or similar in every trade you take. When you're investing, people look at percentages very often because they're in it for the long haul. They're saying, what were the gains that we could have over the next year? Or what were the gains that I had over the last year? Okay, when they look at stocks, how they've moved, or the market, for example. Market moved over 40% since the election. Uh, today we had we had a 5% correction at one point. I don't know where we closed today. It's more than that now. But it's the idea that day trading is very different from investing. And, and to me, that makes it easier in the sense that you don't have to look out ahead so far. 
it's much, much easier to determine where something is going to go between now and five minutes from now or between now and 30 minutes from now than it is to determine where something's going to go now and six months from now or now from two years from now, okay? Because anything could happen. So the longer you have time to try to decide where somebody's going to go, there's a million possibilities of anything the stock could do or the market. When you're in something, you can, you can see when momentum is going to come in quick in the gap, if it's a quality gap, and therefore you can get in and out like a, you know, like a dancer, do to do, and you're just dancing along, you know, making these quick moves instead of uh, these long, long, big moves. And I'm not, I'm not talking people out of investing. I'm just saying it's a different mindset, it's a different mentality. And if you want to day trade, and if you want to be successful, you have to have a trader mentality when you're looking at things. Uh, Tommy H is asking, what's the required experience level for your class? You don't have to have any experience to do my class because I teach you from the ground up how to look at charts and do gaps. But I've taught people that know nothing and I've taught people that have been trading for, you know, longer than I'm alive. So I said, as far as requirements, there is no requirements. Everybody has a different place where they're at in their life. If you come to me, you don't know anything, you never traded before at all, you're going to, you may have a learning curve, how, how to do a platform, how to press the button, how to get in. You'll learn charts brand new, but I don't think it's a bad thing because you won't have any bad habits. Sometimes people have been trading for a long time come to me and in their mind they have a set, set thing, a, a belief system that is incorrect about gaps or even charts and then they have to unlearn that and then they go through that process mentally. So what's better, what's worse, neither one. It's whoever you are. Whoever you are, accept who you are and where you're at in your life and just learn the things that I'm teaching you. You gotta keep your mind open though because a lot of stuff that I do is not exactly what most people would do. Uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why I'm successful. So anyways, a big point of what I'm trying to say here is that day trading is not investing. This is a way of producing income. Boom, boom, you're chunking it out. Go in, take the money, get out. Sometimes in the room people get upset. I call a good trade, they get out quick. Apple was one of them on Friday. If you had held it all the way down and went to the dream target, which was 160, okay? You know, I say no piggy targets, no piggies. You can't look at day trading like something like more. Less is more. Less number of trades, more, su more successful you're going to be, lower odds of having losses. Most of the days that I've ever traded, the biggest days I've ever had, there's one ticker symbol in my window, one trade, okay? So you're taking money out of the market when you're doing this kind of thing. It's in fast moves. You can't look at this like investing. And if you are in your head about that, I'm telling you, square it out. Have two different accounts. Have one for day trading and one for investing. If it bothers you seeing long-term positions in your in your queue there, plus the day trades. All right? Good question, Tommy S. And anybody else if you have questions. Anyways, if the goal is for you roughly to make $1,000 a day, you got to look at it in the bigger picture. Don't get caught up if one day you don't do any trades or one day you have a loss. You have to look at it like, what is my goal for the week? What is my goal for the year? What is my goal for the month? Okay, and that's how you do it. And you set your risk accordingly. Now, if you can't afford to risk about $1,000 a trade, which is an advanced risk, then, then risk what you can afford. Build your account slowly over time. That's the best way to do it. Because if you, if you are in a position where you're gonna be a scaredy cat about taking the trade, then, then, you, then you know that your risk is too big. And I always say the best thing that you can do is go in a, in a like a like you're going up the mountain. It's better to go take the steps. Step it up, step it up, step it up. You know, you, that's the best way to do it. And your conviction will build over time and your confidence will build over time so you can get to the point where you're risking more, okay? And you build your account along the way. You're in the learning process and while you're learning, you're making money. So step it up. What you don't want to do is start up here then go poof you know, like that, and make some stupid mistake like a fat finger being a new platform or something like that. And if you've never traded my system or never traded on live on a live platform, you got to give yourself a learning curve. Uh, Sterling Silver, I'm not sure what your name is or if you have, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Um, can you give us an average for software monitor or any other expenses besides the class cost of what we might be laying out up front to get started? If you, I, my cost as a class, we'll review that at the end, yes. And um, as far as software, you, you just need a trading platform. 
I don't have any other software for you to be buying or anything like that. It's wherever you want to trade, and some places have free platforms at the broker. Some have a cost. Those costs can range from $50 a month to $450 a month, depending on how detailed or intricate of a system that you want to get to use to trade. But really, all you would be doing uh, with my system is pressing the button to short stocks and then cover or go long or and then cover uh, and to put in stops. So you don't need a really intricate system to trade with me, but you have to have a platform that will allow you to take positions on and off. Um, and some places offer free ones, some places don't. Sometimes a, bro a broker will say, well, if you do this many trades a month, you get a free platform. So all that stuff, you got to shop around and you got to ask about them. As far as a monitor goes, well, I'm assuming you just need a computer. Um, you just need a computer. You have to be able to look at the charts in a computer. You have to have it in a way to electronically take the positions on a computer. I only have two monitors, and, and I actually really only have two monitors because I'm running the room and have the charts. So, I mean, if I didn't have a trading room, I would only use one monitor. There would be no reason for me to have two. So one monitor is more than sufficient unless you're, unless you're running a trading room like me. Um, and it depends how big you want the screen. You know, I have, my, I have about 20-some inch screens. I forget if they're 22 or something like that. So it depends what you want. Some people have like eight screens or something crazy like that. I don't. Um, I, I can only look at straight on at, the, at one time. So I mean, having eight screens, you know, isn't going to make me a better trader, quite frankly. And if you're only in one trade at a time, uh, if you're with me, that's what it will be. This, this is not necessary for you to have any more than one screen. Hopefully that answers that questions. But I would talk to your broker. You really just have to have the money to open up a trading account. Um, do you go short before the gap down? No, I wait until the gap occurs because I can't predict what the gap is going to do um, until it actually occurs. So I say wait, get the confirmation. Sometimes I'll get a feeling that I think something's going to do something. Netflix was one of those and Apple was too on Friday. Apple's chart didn't look that great to me uh, for the last two weeks and I was not surprised at all actually that it opened down on a Friday morning. Actually, I was more surprised because we can look at it at the end here, but Apple was up at one point Thursday night and I thought, well, that's funny. And I thought that's kind of funny. And then when I got up Friday morning and it was down, it actually turned around from the night to the morning, which can happen, which is why I don't trade in the post to pre-market. But I looked at it and I thought, now nah, that makes sense. So I was all over, all over Apple Friday morning as an option in a day trade because I, I had conviction and it looked lower. But I didn't do anything in it. I didn't call anything in it. I didn't do a, a tootin' thing until after 9.30 a.m. Friday morning. So, you, you know, you gotta wait. And like I just said, sometimes things can flip. And, you know, I mean, flip from night to morning. All right, anyways, here, let's go over the last two weeks of trades. Uh, there wasn't anything, I wasn't in the room today. Gyro ran the room, but I think he didn't call anything. Galahad, you're here. Did, did uh, Gyro do anything today? I don't think he did. Even though the market fell all day, he probably could have shorted a million things, but I don't think there were any good gaps this morning. But the last two weeks of results I have in here, one day there were no trades. And the reason I'm showing this is because I want you people to see that the profits are real and you don't have to have some monster days to make these kinds of monies, to hit the target. And actually, if you made half of this, okay, which was over 17 grand in two weeks, if you made half of these profits, it would still be a huge month for many, many people. So you do not need to risk $1,000 even to make good money. But I'm using these examples here because we're talking about 250 grand a year. But even if you made half of $17,000 in two weeks, which is not even a full 30-day period, you would have been up a lot of money by anyone's standards, okay? And these, there were some over three grand days in here, but I mean, one day was only, you know, over 700 bucks, so, and one day no trades. There were no losses though. I've only had two gaps that have not worked the way that I predicted since the start of the calendar year in January. Two that were losers that just didn't work out at all. There was no other setups in them, they were failures, and that is a huge, huge win ratio success. So. It has been a great year, 2018. I'm still very bullish in the market for those of you that are wondering, uh, even though we sold off the last two days. But I will tell you that if the market would turn, okay, which could happen, it could, you know, I'm in, I'm in a perfect, perfect mindset and a perfect position with my 
talent and my skill level to take full, full on advantage of a market that would drop and fall and break because I know how to short better than any person that I know. And I know a lot of people. So, you know, I've read the market bullishly. I do believe we hold somewhere, but if for some reason we don't, okay, you will, you can make money shorting. All right. You can make money shorting as a trader. And it's something that a lot of people can't wrap their head around that like to go long and prefer to go long. All right, there were a couple longs in here, but most of those trades were shorts. So now, you know, getting back to what I was saying about institutional money, that's what I'm looking for when I look at my system. Are institutions going to buy the stock or are they going to sell the stock? All right, so that's what I'm looking at because you want to be with those people that make the moves and they make big moves. They take big positions on, they take big positions off, all right? So very, very important to be with them because it's easier to make money when you've got somebody pushing something down, for example, and you're shorting it rather than fighting against it. And by institutions, I mean hedge funds. I mean big banks, big professional traders, not small traders, institutions that will take on and plop on a size millions and millions of shares that when they press the button to get in, you know, at a certain price, say, you know, 150 bucks a share, they're not getting filled at $150 a share. They move the stock. That's not what we do, okay? But we're looking for those people, which is why I wait for the gap. Then I analyze the gap and I rate it according to a 26 point rating system, which I created, you know, 10 years ago. And that's how I determine if somebody's gonna sell off or not. Um, Tommy H, how large is the account producing these numbers? What leverage is needed from the broker? I would say, the leverage you need from the broker depends on where you trade for number one. So you can trade at a retail account, it's four to one. If you go to a prop place, they're gonna give you 10 to one or 20 to one. So the leverage varies on the place that you decide to trade. That's nothing that you get from me. And there's no set requirements for leverage from me. It's the amount of cash that you have and what you will get leveraged. And the broker is, determines that. They're giving you the buying power. They're giving you the margin. They're basically saying, we're gonna lend you this much money on your money if you're gonna day trade in and out quickly. And there's two to one margin overnights, but I think it's important to stick with the day trading for now, for this. Um, as far as how large are the account, I think, to, to, I mean, obviously I've been trading for a long time, so I have a, a bigger size account. Some of these trades going back here are over $100 a share, over 150, even Apple was more expensive eBay is around 40 some bucks. Uh, to me, that's not that expensive. So the stocks in here range from prices. It could range from anything from five bucks a share that I do all the way up to something like Apple, 160. I'd say Apple's on the high end of something that I would do and it's not something that I do every day. If I find a really expensive stock, I will just do it as an option, like Amazon, Google, Netflix, okay? I'm usually not day trading things that cost $200 a strike or for a, a share or something or more. So I would say 100,000 in margin will give you a good comfortability, but if the stock is like Apple, you won't be able to take big size in it, but the stock will be bigger. So, you know, it depends where you go. Again, you open up a retail account with 25 grand, you're gonna get 100,000 margin right away to have it. If you want a prop account, you're probably gonna have to have 10 grand to have 100,000, but it doesn't mean you can't trade my system with 50,000 in margin or 25,000 in margin. You just can't risk $1,000 a trade, but you shouldn't be doing that anyways, because if you have five grand in an account, in a prop account, you shouldn't be risking 20% of your account in one trade. I mean, you can, but that really kind of wouldn't make that much sense. Do you know what I'm saying? Let me know if anybody has any questions about that. Um, how many shares do you typically trade each trade? Again, it varies on the stop. Something like Apple's gonna have a stop of a buck or something. So that's gonna be much different than if I take something where the stop's 20 cents. So it could be 5,000 shares, could be 1,500. Again, it depends where the entry and the stop is and it depends on the price of the stock. Typically stocks that are higher are gonna have bigger stops. Therefore, I can only take less size in those. Not because of the buying power, but because of the risk that I want to take. I don't want to take 5,000 shares of Apple because I don't want to risk $5,000 in one trade. I could, but I, I don't want to because there's always a chance the trade may not work. So, you know, I could. <laughs> and if I had on Friday, <laughs> I'd be up a crap load of money. So, but, you know, I mean, one of the guys in the room, and I don't want to get too off target here, but he did a testimonial at the end. He did, he did Amazon on 
Friday, and he took 50 contracts of Amazon, which was a whopper of a size, and he made $63,000. So, I mean, it depends how much you can stomach to risk and the money that you have. So it's, you know, it's really on you, but you got to know the system and know what you're doing, because certainly if you risk a large amount of money in a trade, um, which to me, even $1,500 is a large amount of money, you know, to take in one trade that you're in for a couple minutes, you really got to know what you're doing. Okay. So here's the Apple trade. I'm just going to go over it here. This is from Friday, the day trade. Again, it fell off a planet. Oops. All right. Um, so share size in Apple, 1500, risk 1350, profit 2000. Here's the one minute chart. So I looked at the gap in the daily chart to determine that it was a short. Then I went and looked on the one minute chart to get in the trade. Boom. This setup here was in it. Boom. Got the drop. And it did drop all the way down here. Again, no picky targets. So I didn't hold this all the way down. Why? Went to a number, went to a first target, goal for the day hit. More than expected, boom, out. But if you held this longer, you could have made more money. And if you held it all day, you could have made more money. But like I said, it dropped all the way down to 160. But the idea of doing my system for day trading, and one of the reasons, again, I think that I'm very successful is I'm so focused on the gap, the ticker symbol, the entry, the targets, and just getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out. Like, I don't worry about the fact that this went on to 160. I would be more worried if I would be up two grand and it would retrace against me and then I would lose. Like that would be idiot land. So I don't worry about the fact that I could have, you know, held it longer. You can take another trade if you want in a trade uh, in a stock later in the day if you want to do a second trade. Sometimes I do that, but it's rare. But I know there are people sometimes in the room that do do that, you know. But this is my focus. Boom, boom. 9.30 and 10, 9.30 and 10, 9.30 and 10. Get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. So this was a short. Dave A is asking a win-loss uh, win ratio for my method, for my system. I will tell you there's video online from the tracking from 2017 where my win-loss for day training was around 75%. Since the beginning of this year, it's been 90%. So, you know, you take what you can from that. I do believe my trading has improved. I've been speaking on Fox News and Fox Business Network, and since I've been on TV, my trading has improved. My skill set has improved. I'm more focused than ever. People that have been trading with me have benefited extremely from that. So I'm going to continue to stay on point. But it's not to say that, you know, even a 75% ratio, which was last year, that's still amazing for day trading. So I would use that as a basis point, but this year has been phenomenal. So like I said, there's only been two losses so far this year. And I have a tracking video for both of those online, Dave A, or you can email me. It's 2017, 2018, if you want me to send it to you. Anyways, it's all about the quantity of the size you're taking. The more size you take, the more money you're going to make. The problem is that you can't take size until you know what you're doing. All right? Because even really, if you had a small account, you could take size in a trade if you knew what you were doing. But if you don't, you can't. It's too much risk. So helps me to have the conviction. I would say people say, oh, I want a big account. Oh, I want all this money. Yeah, that's great if you have a lot of money. Do you know how many people lose in the market that have a lot of money? A lot, okay? So having a lot of money doesn't necessarily equate that you're going to make a lot of money. If you know what you're doing and you have an account with $2,500, you can flip that account over and double it in no time, in a month. So the point is that you need to know what you're doing. It's money, 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 money. It's wins, okay? And the high win ratio that we're talking about. You've got to build it up. If you have a lot of money, yeah, it's great that you can take size and trades and take risk. But you can lose a lot just the same if you don't know what you're doing. So it's the point. Or if you have a big account, you may never take any risk to really turn that money around because why? You don't have conviction and you don't have a method and you don't have a system that you're following, that you watch, that you know well, that you can do. I mean, I talk to people all the time. Some people have a lot of money, a lot of money, and they don't know what to be doing with it, okay? So they, they don't even take any size because they just don't know what they're doing. So then what's the point of that? Their money is just sitting there then. It's not earning anything in a savings account, all right? And, it, and, and it's just going nowhere, and really, it's costing them because they have money that they're not doing anything with that they could be using, which is what I find so interesting about this market, actually, because people have been saying, oh, my gosh, you know, the market is too expensive. It's up too much. It's up too much. It's up too much. Now the market's fallen the last two days. 
And now people are negative about that. I mean, so, you know, it's just, it's just hilarious to me, actually. Um, anyways, the benefit of day trading, which, which, which is, you know, there's a lot of benefits, but one of them is you don't have to be in New York. You don't have to go down to the stock exchange. You don't have to be a licensed person. You can just open up your own account, trade your own money, and work from home anywhere in the world. And so that's very beneficial. It's something when I started, I thought was amazing. And when I did start trading, I did live in New York. But I will tell you that I thought I was going to have to go to school. I was going to have to get licensed. I was going to have to do all this crap. And that wasn't the case. So although my class is a two-day class, which is 16 hours, it's this coming Saturday and Sunday, February 10th and 11th. And you may have a learning curve with the platform and, and while you're learning the system in the room, it's still way less trouble and hassle than it ever is in learning how to get a Series 56 or a Series uh, 7 license or, or any of these things that are normally required when people want to become stockbrokers or, or living in the right place where you get the right job. So, and you'd still have to work your ranks up. So, you know, this process is still very, very easy and doable for people no matter where they are, no matter how much money they have, if they put their mind to it, okay? Um, let me just see another, JJ, so your example of a $2,500 account is a prop account, JJ. If you don't know what a proprietary day trading account is, then look it up. Um, it's called a proprietary day trading account where you have uh, your money at a set place and they give you leverage and you have to meet all their set requirements. Again, I'm not a broker, but that's something that you could look into online and read up about. Retail accounts um, have the, the $25,000 minimum. Uh, Tommy H says, how is the class laid out? Is it, the class is nine to five, there's a lunch break, and if we go over, we go over, Saturday and Sunday. I just go answer questions, I'm pretty good. I answer all the questions of the people in the room. I read them out loud and go through and answer them. I teach the class live, and it's consecutive, Saturday and Sunday, two days, but you get a lunch break, okay? Uh, where was I? Okay. So again, so many people want to trade for many, many different reasons. Sometimes people want to trade because they want to cha change careers. That was true for me. Uh, I was doing mortgages and I was working too many hours. And when I got into trading, it was 2008. So the mortgage business had changed from 2007, 2008. So I was looking for a new career. Sometimes people, um, you know, just want to do it because they're retired and they have free time and they're bored and they like the market. That's fine. And some people want to do it that you know don't need to work at all and they just want to take their money and have some extra money coming in don't really want to go to a part-time job for 20 hours a week uh, some people are doing it and have full-time jobs and are don't you know want to quit their full-time job they like their full-time job but they want to be earning more money they don't want their money to sit in a savings account and earn you know 0 0.05 percent so for a lot of people, there's a million different reasons why they want to trade. And I've talked to and met them all. For me, it really was the career path, the career focus, and I was able to accomplish that, but it did take me several years. I say, you know, the idea of, you know, working for yourself has always been something that I was set out to do. When I did mortgages, I really pretty much worked for myself. Actually, I, the company I worked for was in Arizona and I was in New York, so it was a very unique situation. I was the only person that worked for the, the mortgage company that I worked for that did that in, the, in their whole company. Everyone else was there on location. So yeah, I, I, I really am a very uh, independent person. And again, I don't know all of you, but if you're an independent person, the idea of working for someone else, it absolutely stinks. <laughs> So if you are an independent person and you want to control your own destiny and control how much money you make, then you really got to find a way to work for yourself. And one of the benefits of day trading is that you can do that. Now, some people say, well, I wish I could risk this much right now and I wish I could make this much right now, but how are you ever going to get there? The idea of risking $1,000 in a trade is, is out of reach for some people right now. But then risk 100, risk 200. You're never going to get to the point where you can risk 1,000 until you risk some at all and learn the system and do it right. So you have to say, I'm going to get there and here's how I'm going to do it and have a path so you reach your goal. The longer that it takes you to, to do anything at all or make any decisions or even learn how to train, you're never going to reach the goal. Okay. So for me, it was really the career path 
Um, and the financial freedom to not have someone cap my salary, like go in where you get a set amount of money. But when I did mortgages too, it was never capped. It was the harder, the more harder I worked, the more, the more that I made. And, and with trading, it's interesting because again, it's not about the hours, but I worked hard to learn what I do to get the skill set, which now is really paying off for me. The business, trading, you know, the calls I've made to have a 90% win ratio this year. I mean, it just, you know, at some point, I'm telling you people, if you get on the right path, at some point, it's going to pay off. The problem is that so many people don't know the right path to take, aren't focused, and they have such a negative attitude because, you know, I'm right there with you that there's a lot of people teaching trading stuff out there that does not work. I know. That's why I ended up creating my own system. And um, the influx of Bitcoin I found rather interesting myself too because I don't trade Bitcoin. I have no interest in that. And the reason is Bitcoin doesn't have any gaps. But once the Bitcoin started getting big in 2017, everybody and their brother then was teaching classes on Bitcoin. And people had no freaking clue about it. And they were teaching classes. So I, I get where people have this animosity about educational stuff and trading all of that. But not everybody out there is, a, is, is, is bad. Um, in fact, many people are good. They're, even though there's a lot of bad apples, you have to sift through them, okay? And you also have to have a, a time of day that works with you that you can do it. So for me, I live in the Eastern Time Zone, 9, 30, 10 a.m., I'm a morning person. That's perfect for me. It's perfect for me to get up early, I look at my stuff, I have breakfast, I work out, I, I trade. Then I'm done. Then I have the rest of the day in myself. So, you know, it's perfect for me. You, it has to fit your time schedule that you can do it. And, and it has to be something that you're interested in doing, you know. So that is something that you have to decide. But I've always liked numbers. I've always, I've always been a math person, even doing mortgages. And ever since I first looked at a chart, I've always loved charts. And I really love charts. And analyzing and trying to predict where somebody's going to go. I mean, now everybody is wanting me to predict where the market's going to go after today. And actually, I was on TV like about two hours ago talking about it and you know, and then the market sold off into the close. I mean, you know, I have to, I'm going to look, I'm going to look in the market tonight. I'm going to look at the market tomorrow morning. I'm going to try to predict where we go. You know, it's very, very interesting stuff. I love that about what I do. I think it's fun. So the money is fun. That's true. But looking at charts, is fun to me. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in doing, you'll, you'll really enjoy being with me. Um, JJ has a question. I know what a prop account is, but I've never seen this in a stock brokerage. Uh, yeah, there's prop accounts for stocks. There is, yes. And if anyone needs a referral for any type of place, you can always email me. I can send you a referral. It's up to you to, to look into the stuff, though, um, you know, what to do. Because it's got to fit, you know, your budget. And, you know, the platforms, like I said, are all different at the different places. I just would make it very easy for yourself, though. Check out, you know, two or three places. You don't have to call 20 places. So anyways, I look at trading as something that you're chunking it out with the money. I think that's the best possible way to, to look at doing this. And then you'll be less stressed, too. You know, when, when you're in something for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, it's stressful. Once you're in and out of the trade and you know you have the money, oh, it's done. It's like your job is done for the day. If your job is to make $1,000 a day, once you're up $1,000, if it starts to back up against you, get out. Your job's done. You did it. The job is over. You can go back to bed or do whatever you need to do. Okay. So I really just look at this time period in the morning, particularly between 9.30 and 10. Sometimes I'll be in something a little bit later. That varies. I'm not going to kill somebody if it's still going, for example. But the benefits of trading are you work only pretty much an hour a day. You can take a vacation when you want. You have unlimited income potential, which is based on what your size. Um, in fact, the man that I was telling you about that you know made over 60 grand, I think he's, as to my knowledge, no one has told me otherwise, I think he made the more money of anyone that I have ever taught so far. <clears throat> if there's other people out there I've taught that aren't trading in the room with me, they haven't told me that they've made more maybe they will start to come out of the woodwork now because people have been really watching the numbers I've been putting on the board, but um, I should take a survey. I, I think that was pretty spectacular. You really have unlimited income potential, and, and it's not about doing more. It really is about honing in your skill set and then plopping it on with size, which takes guts, but the guts come from knowing what to do and, and, and learning it. 
it's like if someone second guesses me and says, oh, Melissa, you know, I don't agree with you with this. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me at all because I'm so confident in what I do. And again, one or two times if I'm wrong, I go back, I look at it, I say, what well, did I miss something? And sometimes I did, but most of the times it just didn't work. This is, you're playing the odds when you're trading. The, the odds are that sometimes something won't work, okay? But that's why you have a set risk. That's why you just don't say, oh, you know, I've got a $5,000 account. I'm going to risk all $5,000 in one trade. That's why you don't do that, okay? You have to know going in that sometimes things won't work. But over the long haul, each week, each month, each year, you definitely should be up. And the, the chart, okay, if I was drawing a chart, the trend of the chart should be up <coughs> with your results. Um, Dave Asin, do you call out the trades in real time when trading room? The answer is yes. I definitely do. In fact, Friday's room I think I have up. You can go listen to it on YouTube. Go subscribe to my YouTube, The Stock Swoosh. I have a million kajillion uh, live trading room videos on there. You'll hear me call the trades live. Every day I do it. That's how people are following me in there. So the benefits are what? There's a lot of benefits to trading. Pretty much the only downside or negative to trading is that it costs money to do my class and open up an account. But really, there's a cost to do anything. So, I mean, that's really not a downside. It's just a hurdle that people have to get over. But you should be able to very quickly make back the cost of the class, depending on your risk, in a short time. And that isn't, shouldn't be the goal for people. But knowing that I think helps people being in the room, getting my live calls definitely helps people be profitable very, very quickly after the class. Um, you know, you've just got to take the right steps. You've got to put yourself going in a positive direction. Uh, if you're in a situation where you're trading now and you're losing money, I just, I say stop and take a step back. If you decide you want to learn with me, great. If you want to take a break, great. Don't keep going down a path though where you're losing, 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 all right? I really think the financial freedom aspect of it is an important part of trading, where you are in control of what you're doing. Because you really are. I mean, there's people in the room sometimes that do trades I don't call. Sometimes it works, sometimes they don't. I might lecture someone in the room that wasn't a good trade, but you know, if the choice is yours, okay? What you wanna do with it. And I'm telling you, I'm really good at what I do. So the, my advice to people is listen to the things that I'm saying and enjoy the rest of your day. Don't sit and be trapped at your desk till four o'clock. Part of the process of this is realizing, oh my gosh, I can step away. I've got tomorrow. I made what I made today. I'm gonna go back in tomorrow. Then I'm gonna go back in the next day. Again, looking every day. So my system really is based on stocks that are gapping, but I use a checklist and that's what you come and learn in my class. It's a 26 point checklist. I forget what Apple rated, 20, 21 points. I don't even remember now. I think it was 20 points. Anything 20 points or more, I will do the gap in the direction of the gap. So if the stock gaps down and rates 20 points or more, it's a short. If the stock gaps up and rates 20 points or more, it's a long. And that's when you come and learn from me what to do with the gap. So I measure gaps for rating them in a daily chart to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. A big move on the day, preferably, like Apple. Early confirmation of the bias. Early means between 9.30 and 10, and precise entries with follow through and a good risk reward to re target potential. Very, very important, okay? Chunk it out. You know, again, if you're following me in the room, you can make the cost back faster if you're trading on your own, but the larger benefit is learning the system. Learning the system so you can use it for the rest of your life. As long as the U.S. market has to close and open, you will always have stocks that gap in the U.S. market. And you will have a lot of companies that have a lot of momentum, money behind them, volatility. And that's why people even that live in other countries like to trade the U.S. market. I'd say half my clients aren't even in the U.S. People love to trade the U.S. market. There's a lot of money coming into the market in the last two years. And don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Okay, things still look sunny on the overall bigger picture horizon despite the sell-off today. So if your long-term goals are you want to take advantage of all of the money that's there available in the market for you to profit, whether you go long or short, you got to think of it that in the long term. And, and the cost of the class is $5,500. In the long term, that's, that's a sneeze. It's nothing. I, mean, I just got done telling you one guy made sixty grand in, in, in Friday. I mean, he, he, he had one week, two weeks ago, he made 14000 He is way part, he signed up for every service I have. 
and he still way surpassed the cost of trading with me. Um, he's he's just really a super nice guy, and he's worried that I'm going to, you know, run away and go on TV. But even though I'm doing TV, I am fully committed to my business, at least for the next few years. Um, and I think that being on TV has improved my trading, so it's just a win-win. But I won't be teaching for 20 years. Um, so I'm here now, take advantage of it during the time that I'm at this great, great point in my life where I still want to teach and I still want to trade and I still want to talk on TV and do all these things and give my information to people because there will come a time when I don't want to and I'll want to do other things, all right? So, I mean, you know, look at your long-term goals where you want to be. And, and I truly care about my students and I really want to see everyone succeed. You can ask anyone that is with me. When people have a bad day, I talk to them. They can call me. They can email me. You know, I'm doing everything I can to try to really... Uh, talk more about the success of other people than just myself that are students so that people see that regular people can do it because regular people can do it okay and i'm a regular person too um but i think it's important for people to see that that anybody can do it so anyways once you know what to do you can do day trading swing trading or option trading with my system if you want to you just your risk would be different all right your time frame for the targets would be different um, and your stops, all of that stuff would be different. But it is about being consistent with what you do. So I teach a class, it's called the Golden Gap System. It's a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. That's what you'll learn in the class. The checklist tells you what to trade, when and in what direction, it teaches you targets, and the 26 point checklist predicts a directional bias in a stock. And actually, I didn't rate the gap down in the market today. I'm gonna to do that tonight afterwards, I need to do that. Um, I did not do that. It'll, that'll be interesting once I do that. But really, it's about one strategy. That's what you need. You need a good strategy. You won't be successful without them. You can read charts all over town. But if you don't have a focus every day, it's going to be hard for you to consistently make money. All right? You could have shorted almost anything in the market today and, and made money. An idiot could have. That's not the key. Very rare the market power trends down or up in one direction all day, but when it does, everything seems to go with it. Today was the downside, Friday, same thing. But you really need to know what you're doing on any given day because five days a week, the market isn't gonna power trend. So I look for very specific stocks. I trade a different symbol almost every day, okay? All the days in the market in a year, it's a lot. Different symbols every day. I'm looking for something specific, unique, and that's what you learn from me in the points. So let me just see if there's any other questions. No, I don't think so. Anyways, I'm looking for institutional money. I'm looking for the institutional money in the price patterns, in the gaps. And that's what I do. If I'm following the institutional money, I feel confident that I'm going to be able to profit. All right? So ask yourself if you think that this time frame will work for you to trade, 9, 30, and 10. Make money quickly. Do you have a passion to trade? Do you want to work from home? And are you looking for a new career? If any one of these things are the case, then, you know, I definitely would check out all my information online on the website, thestockswish.com. Email me if you have questions. Call me if you have questions. Any of those things. So my class is this week, and it's called the Golden Gap Course, February 10th and 11th, 9 to 5. Class tuition is $5,499. If you're interested, email me to register. Deadline is Friday. The class is online. However, I am offering a special, but only through today, uh, for the trading room and the options letter. If you're interested, that expires tonight. If you were on my list, you already heard about that yesterday. It's a special for the Super Bowl. If you're not, then email me or you can call me tonight. Any questions from anyone about anything else? Here's the one testimonial. It's very, very long about the gentleman that did the Amazon trade and made this kind of money Friday. Does anyone have any questions so far? Good, good questions though tonight. Um, good participation here by everybody. And here is another testimonial I got from Steve over the weekend. This was after the, the Friday testimonial. Um, Steve is an interesting because here he, he's, he, he just said that he has a tiny account and he has 100% winning trades. He just did the class in December um, and he just started in January. 
and he's planning on quitting this job. He's going to give it till August till he officially quits, I guess. But he, he's a really su good success story. And I will tell you that Steve had followed me for years. So Steve followed me for years and just couldn't pull the trigger on the class. And he probably is kicking himself in the butt why he waited so long. Because, because obviously he knows the system now works. But he followed me for years and did a job he hated and watched me, you know, all my videos, all my emails for years and years and years on my list and finally pulled the trigger into the class and signed up and now is as happy as a clam. So he, you know, he wishes he would have done it years ago and he waited. So it's, I, I just think that, you know, people want so much confirmation that something's going to work because they might have had such uh, bad times and, and losses from the market or taking classes that didn't learn anything. Uh, you know, I'm a person that's very intuitive and when I find something I want to do or when I meet a person or when I take a trade, you know, I just have a feeling when I know things are right and I, and I really make a lot of decisions based on my intuition, which is immediate. I, um, you know, you couple that with intelligent decisions and what you can afford, but I really follow, follow my intuition and I follow my heart and it has definitely worked out in my life. So I think, you know, if you are worried about things that happened in the past and constantly, you know, going over in your mind things that have failed for you, it will really prevent you from moving forward in life or moving forward as quickly as you could. So he's a great success story. One, he has a small account. Two, he followed me for years before he pulled the trigger and wishes he hadn't. And he's found immediate success and he hasn't had one loss. So any other questions? Anyways, the system works. And this is a preview to my new website, which will be launching sometime soon this year. Beautiful picture of New York. My new logo. Uh, any questions? Tommy, do you have a question? It's 521. Let's quickly look at the market. Love that picture of New York. And we're down here, we're down here from the after hours. Look at this. Two sixty four eighteen. we closed. Oh, we are really down after hours. Two sixty four eighteen. Let's find that first. So here's where we closed. So we're down. Looks like we were down more earlier. Hold on. 259. So we were down five points since the close really at some point in the last hour and a half. Uh, if you want to email me, you can get a trial to the room this week. Yes. Uh, let me just quick rate this guy. Does that, anybody have any questions? I want to rate this market gap today because I did not think we'd sell off like this. When I looked at the market earlier, you saw what it had that chart, but I wasn't standing in front of my charts all day. And I want to look at this here. Right in the room, if you have any questions, I want to rate the market gap. Does anyone else have any other questions? I'll look at the cues next, but let me just look at this first. Does anyone have any questions? All right, hold on one second. I'm going to rate the market and I'll be right back. If you want to, if you want to stick around, we got five minutes here. Just hang on. Let's see if this was a good gap today to short in, in, in the pre-market. <laughs> 